So with that, we come to the end of the CT spectroscopy discussion. So in the CT spectroscopy discussion, we have gone through these following points. First of all, why chirality is crucial? Because it connects molecular structure with molecular property. Then we look into the system, why it is important because biology actually plays with chirality. So chirality is an important factor over there for controlling the molecular recognition, controlling the reaction rate. Even you can say chirality is a signature of biology. If you have an enantiomeric excess of a sample, you can say it is probably something biological is influencing over there. Then we look into especially the amino acids. So study the amino acid structure, their one letter and three letter codes and how it is happening. So we actually gone through them. And then we looked into the molecular origin, why a system can be chiral. It is coming chirality from not only the molecule, but also the light, what is the LCP and RCP, how it is behaving. Then we found some of the parameters that we can use CD and ORD, which is coming from optical rotation and the ellipticity that it is coming. We found CD is actually a better uh, parameter to find out the chirality of a molecule. And at the end, we have gone through some of the examples of chirality and how it can help us to not only know the overall the structure of the molecule, but their stability, whether it is binding a metal or not, and all this particular information. So these are the take home messages from the CD spectroscopy. So please uh, go ahead and ask any question if you have any before we uh, go for the next uh, topics. So please go ahead and ask any question if you have any or any comment that you uh, want to repeat some of the topics one more time or you are not very happy of the explanation of a few topics you want to go ahead with one more time. Please go ahead. That previously, yesterday uh, means that in the previous class we have told that um, about the directionality. So, what is the means x polarized light, y polarized light, and z polarized mm -hmm. light, and how we will uh, distinguish them? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is a very important question that is uh, uh, mostly going to be covered in Professor Leela's class. So, I'm just going with just a hint of it what is x and y is polarized light. So, when we actually do look into a system, we try to look into a system in a Cartesian axis, right? So we say, okay, so this will be my Z axis, this will be my Y axis, this will be my X axis. However, the molecule is always tumbling, right? So there are two different axes you can think about. One is actually a molecular Cartesian system. And the other one will be your experimental Cartesian system. And this all difference between them is how you define your X, Y, Z axis, which direction, what is the angle and all those things. Now in the molecular Cartesian axis is a bit difficult to define because the molecule is not remaining at the same place altogether, right? Unless you go to zero Kelvin and even then some uh, <coughs> vibration will be there, the molecule is not going to be stable. It is undergoing different motion, uh, vibration, rotation, translation, all together, you can say it's going through Brownian motions. So you cannot define a molecular axis all the time very clearly. So that is why what we do in experimental system, we actually specifically define, this is my X, Y, and Z axis. And depending on that, I actually measure all the different samples in that experiment. And whenever we define an X, Y, Z axis, it means I am defining it with respect to experimental Cartesian system. Now over here in an experimental Cartesian system, let's say this is your source of light. And this is actually a crystal that you put to create your linearly polarized light. And here is your sample. Now in the sample, if you look 
or where there are different molecules and they can have different orientations. Not all of them are going to be same. And how I'm going to define it. So I'm going to define it with respect to the X, Y, Z axis of my experimental system. And over there, I'm saying that I'm going to put my crystal such that I am going to get only this axis or this axis or this axis. So with respect to that, I'm going to say I have an X polarized light, Y polarized light, and Z polarized light. And over there, the molecular motion is quite fast. And the interaction and time I'm giving to this molecule for this optical spectrum, it is happening in the millisecond to even second scale. That is my time region. And within that time, a molecule will be very similar to the X, Y, Z axis of my experimental section for a while. And in that time, if it is there, it will absorb the light, depending on whether it is Z, Y, or X polarized light active system. Okay. Now, how I can define that which particular transition is X, Y, Z alive for that system? Again, you have to look into the transition moment integral, look into your excited state, operator, and ground state. And what you need to look into, what is their symmetry representation? Ground state. You can say like it is a pi to pi star, this to sigma star, all this interaction. Each orbital you can find out with respect to the symmetry element present in that particular point group. What is that symmetry representation? Say it is A1, say it is A2. Now, A2 and A1 all together, if you want to have it to be non zero, whatever is the symmetry representation of mu, all these things should come together and give a non zero system. And it is only possible in one particular condition. It has to be the A1, the totally symmetric representation for that particular point group. Only then it can be non-zero. That means you have to find out the X such a way that it will be multiplied with A2 and A1 and give you A1. And that is very easy because from the point group, again, you will learn all those things in the later part of the class. It says, if you want to have a A1, it is only possible if you multiply the same system to A1. That means A2 and AX should be A1 together and only then A1 into A1 give you A1. If you multiply anything else, B1, B2, A2, with anything with the totally symmetric representation A1, you are going to get back that particular representation. So that means A2 and AX multiplication should give you A1. And the other corollary of the point group or cracker table is if you want to have A1 by multiplied by two different groups, it is only possible if you multiply the same system. A2 into A2 give you A1. B1 into B1 give you A1. B2 into B2 give you A1. Okay, so that means the X has to be A2 symmetry. And then you look into the character table, find out along with the A2, what is there? So for an example, let me take a, a graph of that. So say this point group of C to V point group I'm talking about. So over there, say I find out A1 is a totally symmetric representation. And uh, this is what I want after that EMI, it should be A1. And say it is nothing but a shy excited state, my operator and ground state. Say my ground state is A1. My excited state is A2. Now I have to find mu such that whatever it is, multiply that and give me A1. Now these two should give me A1 together because you can see it is all one, one, one. So you have to multiply that thing with A1, only then you will get one, 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 one back. Totally symmetric representation. So A2 and X should give you A1. That means it should be an A2 symmetry because only A2 into A2 can give you A1. So that means it should be a, a two symmetric and look into there over here. You see there is no X, Y, Z. So no matter what polarization you give, this will be a transition that you will be, never be seen. Now say my excited state is actually B1 and ground state is still A1. So then it should be a B1 again so that we can multiply all these things together and get a A1. So if it is a B1, then it should be expolarized. Only then it should be happening. Similarly, for B2 active system, it should be Y polarized. A1 active system, it should be Z polarized. 
And by that, you can differentiate which particular polarization is happening. And if your molecular structure that you are imagining to behold a particular point group, it is true or not. Does it answer your question, Arko? Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you, sir. Okay. Any more question before we close it up?